So philanthropy, the love of mankind is the, the, the Greek, the translation. And there are a couple definitions of just, you know, uh, Merriam-Webster's. Goodwill to fellow members of the human race uh, in particular. And then an act or gift done or made for humanitarian purposes. And what I appreciate about these definitions is it is holistic. So it is giving, and you see act or gift, so it's actually not just money, but it's all of who you are. So, uh, someone want to read this? Yeah, go ahead. So this statement rocked the early church. St. Augustine was saying, what should, you know, to the answer to the question, what should I do? He just says, love, and then do whatever you want. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that is, um, that's hard to hear, but also very freeing. It's, it's, you can, depending on how you interpret it, it can be both. The question then becomes, what does it mean to love? Like what, what's in that little command? So I'll read a couple of these. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Man's chief end is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. So those first two are saying this is kind of what, this is what we're all about here on earth, to love God, to glorify him. And then delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart and the desires of the righteous ends only in good. This is saying as we pursue God, loving God and God's glory, his will becomes ours, and ours becomes his, that sort of thing. Where, where we're, as we're sanctified, the things that we want are naturally more and more what he wants. And this is, I think, it's, is at the heart of it. Agape, the complete sacrificial commitment, is this love. So it's, it's Bonhoeffer who says that he, that he bids a man to come and die. So this is a full giving over of everything that you have. That is this love that we're talking about. So the way that I see giving, shaping character is that you have to approach both at the same time, uh, to the why and the how of giving. And um, often people want to know, is it a motivations discussion or is it a practical discussion? And on one side, we need to know why we're giving to determine the practicals. But on the other side is how does what we're actually doing with our giving shape us, shape the how. And I think it's the experience of generosity and of philanthropy that um, alivens us to the benefits that scripture talk about. And so when we are generous and we feel this joy welling up that it is more blessed to give than to receive, that shapes us to be even more generous with more than just maybe the, the amount we give on a monthly basis, but with our whole entire lives. So your worldview really determines, as it relates to money and philanthropy, what you do. One example of that is um, the Greeks largely viewed it kind of as a socialistic, you know, communistic sort of everyone, money is owned by the society. So that's the worldview that people are thinking about money, so that's going to shape how they give. Because it's, if it's already the society, it's not a big deal to kind of keep passing it around versus the Romans were like strict personal ownership. So this is mine, to the point where they were even owners of their children and they could even you know, do what they wanted with their children. And then the, the third major bucket is the Judeo-Christian view of stewardship. And we'll go into that a little bit more. God is the owner and we're the manager over those things. Is people often jump into the how. Where should I give? How, how much should I give? Out of what account? Is it gross or net of taxes? Are you, you know, that sort of question. But I think the most important thing is really this worldview of giving to discover for yourself, why am I actually doing this? Now to the decisions of the how. The normative, again, that triangle. What should I believe about giving? So here's some precepts scripturally that might help shape 
No one can serve two masters, God and money. Interesting that it's actually the, the word there, mammon, is the love of money. So you, it's not necessarily that money is evil. It's the, the lust after money. It's, it's putting money above God. It's more blessed to give than to receive so that the existential, you actually will be, there, there's something good and better about giving than receiving. The attitude is more important than the amount. So that's, again, it gets more about the why. So what am I doing here? You can have the same exact action, but two, do, do two totally different things or have the, the motivation, two different things, and one is maybe right, one's wrong. Uh, it should be a personal decision and done cheerfully. Tithes, this is a big question. How much, right? 10% was the tithe in the Old Testament, but we're not necessarily underneath that law uh, currently. There's no discussion of the tithe in, in the New Testament. Some people have said, actually, if you look at the additional gifts that were given above the tithe for different ceremonies, for additional gifts, for different sacrifices, it's roughly about 23%. Give sacrificially. Maybe a question would be, are you uncomfortable with your giving? Is it stretching you a little bit? Are you having to give something up? Give regularly. So there is this um, periodic giving. You're, you're kind of giving of yourself often. And then first give to God and from a heart of joy. This is first to you. It's not about me lording it over some nonprofit that's doing amazing work. It's actually, first and foremost, it's a gift to God. And so he's my ultimate audience. And great if other things happen. So that can shape the motivation again. So the existential, again, the triangle here, heart, Holy Spirit affections, what breaks your heart? What are you motivated by? What are you passionate about? What are things that just get you excited, that call you out of yourself? That could be a big discovery as to where you want to give. Because the Lord, again, is calling us. There's a calling here of the ways that he's shaped us, the experiences that we've had to, to fit into a particular area of the social sector, of ministry, of you know, the arts, whatever your cause is. And then the situational, what are your strengths? What are the, your spheres of influence? What's going on around you, particularly related to opportunities? So what has, how has the Lord shaped you in this way? When we practice these things that we were designed for, like generosity, we actually come into contact more with reality so that we are shaped into the people that we are meant to be, uh, both from a practical sense, day-to-day -day level, but also from a heart and a motivational level.